agreeing to come on. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right. We are starting another episode of First Sunday. I don't know how I came up with First Sunday. I was like, well, that that seems like the, the a, a way to get my toe wet. I, I'll start with just one Sunday a month because, you know, the, the episodes I do now are, are pretty much Monday through Friday. And then I have the prayer meditation on Saturday. And okay. so trying to find out what's going to grab people's attention and get them focused on what I'm trying to get them focused on. Right. <laughs> I think that's everybody's goal. Well, first Sunday sounds great to me. I know. I thought it was a great idea. So mm -hmm. thank you again for agreeing to be a guest. And you are someone that I know very well. And just, you know, you have been with us in every venture we have undertaken. And you're just always so supportive. And so I really wanted to reach out to you because I, I know your story, um, however much you want to share with us. I'd love just for you to give an introduction. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me, first of all. Um, you know, I've been trying to get on the show. Like, I love <laughs> everything that you guys do, um, even the, the good news. You know, yeah. I'm loving it. I've seen the growth in the channel, and I'm very excited for you guys on that as well. Thank you for that. We um, love doing it. That's one of my And you know, the, the Choose Joy with um, Tisa, <laughs> I mean, my gosh, your voice, like... It's awesome. I Thank need, you. I need most of the time when you're, when I, when I listen to the prayers, I need them every time. It's like right on time. So thank you <laughs> for what you do. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Yep. So tell us a little bit about, um, I know you always have a lot of irons in the fire. One of your um, things is, is a pretty steady, stable, and awesome mom. And so we could talk some about that or what, whatever you'd like for other people to know. Yeah, so speaking of steady and stable and awesome uh -huh. mom, here's my daughter. You know, When okay, I say sorry. a mom's work is never done. Yep, never, ever, <laughs> ever finished, ever finished. What would we do so, though if they were to stop asking? <laughs> I mean, like, I don't know. You know, they're, they're at the age now to yeah. where they are pretty independent. And for mm -hmm. that, I'm very thankful. Yeah. It, um... You know, there were times when they were coming up. I was a single parent, you know, for all of their lives. Mm -hmm. And there were times when they were coming up where I felt like I was being too hard on them, like I yeah. was putting too much on them. But now I do realize that, thank God, I did because yes. they're very independent children. And mm -hmm. I am just enjoying my life right now, <laughs> putting them doing their thing. So uh, my, my um, son, he actually has uh, started a new business. So is awesome. my daughter. Mm -hmm. uh, he's actually uh, doing a lot of, um, what do you call that when you pimp out the ride? You know, okay. how MTV uh -huh. used to pimp the, the rides yeah. out. So he does a lot of that automotive mm -hmm. type stuff where they, you know, wrap cars and do stuff like that. Um, and then Marcia, she has uh, taken on a venture also in mm -hmm. real estate. Uh, and she's actually at Emory right now okay. uh, studying to be, she's not quite sure what she wants to be anymore, uh -huh. but uh, she's going to finish that degree. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't be more proud of the kids. Yeah. You know, the kids are just, they just always make me proud. Yeah. And you know, they, I think they are kind of our first stepping our toe into faith Yeah, because it really is like sending a piece of you out on its own. I'm telling you, I was hey. talking to my nephew today. And, you know, my nephew is one that I kind of raised yeah. um, along with my sister. My nephew is having a hard time understanding uh, how to separate his personal relationship with the baby's mom. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I'm trying to explain to him is that, you know, it, that's the little picture. Yeah. You know, you have to look at the bigger picture and how you're affecting the kids, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's one of the hardest things to understand as a parent, especially when you're young. Yes. You don't you don't get the bigger picture. Uh huh. And so, you know, as you get older. The bigger picture just makes so much sense. <laughs> I mean, so much sense. I was talking to Marcia the other day and I said, you know how you hear people say, I wish I could be 19 again with yeah. the knowledge that I have now. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to give you the knowledge that I have now mm -hmm. at 19. I'm trying to give that to yeah. you. And she goes, yeah. oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes you can't tell them anything. They got to make their own mistakes. Really, well. really. And you yeah. just have to be but, there um, to help guide back. Most definitely. <laughs> them being 
you know, grown now allows me the time to do some of the things that I enjoy doing. Yeah. So I have the space now to finish writing my book. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, I was going to bring that, do one that. Up. Yes. I know. I've been trying to do that for a long time. So now I have the space um, around me, just mm-hmm. the serenity. And yeah. I don't feel like I'm taken from them. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. if I'm if I'm spending that much time on just focusing on writing the book. So I am I am about three fourths finished All with right. that. Guy. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And um it's a bio, so yeah. it's pretty heavy. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's not just, you know, I mean it's it's a pretty heavy book. Yeah. And um also, I've been able to do some some more of my hobbies, mm-hmm. you know, so I love singing. I love karaoke. Yeah. And, you know, I um, just started, well, probably about a year ago, I started mm-hmm. uh, being a DJ. Mm-hmm. So DJ Lady Sunshine, you know, <laughs> I do the karaoke DJ on the side. I haven't quite done it at, you know, a club yet. I don't yeah. know if I'm ready for that world, mm-hmm. if you will, mm-hmm. but really? I like doing, I like doing the home parties, you know, yeah. more intimate. Mm-hmm. parties or you know like birthday party or event centers stuff like that yeah I love that I, I want to go back to um, talking about seeing the bigger picture and how we have the knowledge that we are trying to give the kids and you think about how big God's knowledge is and we're trying to go our own way and do our own thing he's just like yeah go ahead and try it that way and then <laughs> and I'll be here when you get back Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. It's such a, 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 a true parallel of being Always. a parent, really. Mm-hmm. And so, when you think about, um, you know, the the podcast is all about prayer. And so, what what was the the first time that you actually thought prayer would work? So, coming up, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll be completely honest with you. Coming up, um, we didn't have a praying family. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. didn't come from a praying family. We came from a family who said a lot of, you know, you hear a lot of people say, well, I'm going to pray for you Mm -hmm. and I'm going to pray for you. But when I think about it, like no one ever prayed for anybody. (laughs) I don't remember that. (laughs) I'm like, what is going on? Like, why do they keep saying? We always say when somebody says that in passing, that was the prayer. (laughs) Oh, okay. Okay. Well, hey, there you go. (laughs) Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I started doing with my children. Um, when we prayed at night, Mm -hmm. we prayed together Yeah, and we, at the end of the prayer, I always say, and God, you know, I want to pray for anyone who I've told (laughs) that I'm going to pray for you. If I forgot, if I forgot their name and their situation, I want to go ahead and put that prayer in and, and pray that right now. So it kind of just covers everything everything. (laughs) because I didn't want to be, you know, like my, my folks, but at any rate, there was, there was a little bit of church and a vacation Bible school for us when Uh we were kids. And, um, when I felt like prayer would work was probably when I was about 13. Yeah. Um, my mom, my family went like my entire family went from being somewhat normal Mm -hmm. to completely unnormal at age 13. So I, I experienced a lot of trauma, Mm -hmm. um, in that my mom, unfortunately, already traumatic time, 13. Yes. Yes. That is a, that's a horrible time. (laughs) Yeah. 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 So, uh, my mom, she got into selling drugs, trying to Mm -hmm. take care of us and, um, they got caught and she, my stepfather and my sister went to prison when I was 13. Mm -hmm. So I had to take myself, my brother, my younger brother, and my nephew, who was seven months old at the time, Mm -hmm. to my grandma's house and live. And that was really trying. So at night, um, I would just close my eyes and I would begin to pray. And I would pray and say, you know, just my prayer was to, of course, let my mom out. (laughs) But Uh it was, it was at that moment where I understood what prayer was about. You know, I was about 13. So it, it kind of helped me relieve some of the things that I was going through. Yeah. It kind of helped me release mm-hmm. uh, because I didn't really have a lot of mentors or people that I could actually talk to. Mm-hmm. So I think that outlet of, you know, speaking it out and saying yeah. what was going on with me mm-hmm. actually, you know, helped me through the whole process. Uh-huh. I think uh-huh. I was probably about 13. I love that. I love that. Now I'll tell you a funny story. 
It happened with your husband, actually. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I met him at work several mm-hmm. years ago, probably, God, over 10 years ago. Yeah. And uh, he's been retired well. nearly 10. Huh? Hasn't he been retired nearly 10? How many? I know, right? Four, five? <laughs> <laughs> it's been a minute. It's yeah, been a minute. Yeah. So I, um, we had to do some cross training. I knew yes. he was a pastor mm-hmm. and I had to move my area and sit next to him so that we could cross train each other. And uh, we got to know each other and he invited me to the new church. Mm-hmm. It was a brand new church opening up in, at the West End. Yeah. And I went to it one time and I honestly got some business cards from Daryl um, saying that I was a new member of the church and I was also <laughs> going to be an evangelist. Uh-huh. And I was like, I've been me? recruited. <laughs> me? You know, I was honored. At no. the same time, I was, I was, I guess um, I had anxiety about it. I was like, yeah. can I live up to this? But then when I started praying on it and I mm-hmm. started thinking like, I am an evangelist. Like yes. he picked Always. up Just on naturally. that. Yeah. Yes. He picked up on that. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you that I also, like the way that I live my life mm-hmm. sometimes now that I'm familiar with the Bible, now that I understand, you know, my faith, yeah, I get, I get what happened. But at, you know, growing up as a child, I would always wonder, like, how are my thought processes going like this? Like, how? Mm-hmm. And it's because it's inside of us. Yeah, it, it's inside of us. Mm-hmm. And and mm-hmm. so, I um, I was okay with it. I was like, it's in yeah. me. Mm-hmm. You know, he saw it. It was radiant, and it it's is. in me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just been a blessing to so many people. When I think about the people that we have met through you and the, and all the places that we have gone and you just, your, your light just shines. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. So, you know, I, I love um, answered prayer. And so that's why the, the next question is um, wanting to get people to think about when the last time that they that God answered a prayer and they can say without a doubt, it, it was more than what I was even asking for or thinking about. Okay. Well, I'll tell you, um, every morning my prayer is answered. Mm-hmm. Okay. So when I wake up, yes, that's, that's one prayer right there. That's a mm-hmm. definite, you know, <laughs> yeah. he woke me up this morning on a more, I guess, visual or not so obvious Mm -hmm. um, level would be, I recently, you know, I lost my job in July last year, well, June of last year Mm -hmm. due to a budget concern with the state of Georgia. And I was lost. I was with that company for 22 years. And it was like, what am I supposed to do now? Like, this was my life. And what am I supposed to do? And I was without a job for like three months. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're tapping into savings and we're like starting to like, what is going on here? You know, thankfully I'm blessed with a new gig now and I'm Mm -hmm. good, but I was getting depressed. You know, I was in a deep depression. I don't think my friends knew. I don't think that my family even realized it, Mm -hmm. but I was actually getting depressed. Yeah. And I needed change in my environment. I need, mm-hmm. I was like, you know, I got to change, but I didn't have the money that it was going to take in order to do the changes that would make me happy. Mm-hmm. So I started doing little things. I said, okay, well, I got enough money to buy a gallon of paint, right? Mm-hmm. So I started painting my living room and then I painted my dining room and I started buying little things, you know, for my wall mm-hmm. and I had everything together. And my yeah. son says, Um, you know, I started praying, of course, Mm -hmm. on some new furniture. I wanted new furniture. I was like, I deserve some new furniture. I want a new living room suit and I want a new dining room suit. Mm -hmm. I started praying on that. And um, my son came in and he's like, mom, I thought you were going to get a new living room suit and a dining room suit. And I said, I am. You never want to tell your kids you're broke, right? (laughs) That's not what you want to tell your kids, right? So I was like, I'm going to like, leave me alone. You know, I'm trying to get it together. He was like, well, how much is it going to cost? So I said, well, I've been looking at some and this is what I've came up with. You know, I gave him a little amount and um, about a week went by. 
and he came home from work and he had an envelope on the printer and he says mom mm -hmm. that envelope's on the printer for you and I said what is it he gave me the exact amount wow. that I told him mm -hmm. that it would take in order to and I'm and I was in tears yeah and I was like it's he said well you said you wanted to get your couch and table so go get it <laughs> like it was nothing for him he's so unceremonious that one <laughs> I mean and this is a 19 year old kid that I'm yeah it wasn't a little bit of money Tisa I know and I was like wow yeah you know like I I prayed for that mm -hmm. and I didn't realize that's how I would get it yeah but I accepted it yeah the fact that I was able, that's another thing. Mm -hmm, to take it. That's what I was going to say. Oh, girl. <laughs> I have been having a hard time yeah. struggling with accepting blessings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think that has a lot to do with my empathetic uh, personality that I had in the past yeah. and healing from some of the traumas that I've been through. And so I was able to accept that. Yeah. And, and, and when I thought about it, after I thanked God for it, it was like, wow, you were able to accept it as well. You were mm -hmm. able to say, thank you. Yeah. And you didn't say here, son, no, don't do it. You know what I'm saying? Cause that's normally <laughs> what I would have done. Yeah. And so that was probably the most obvious or, you know, like happy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have my new living room suit, my new dining room <laughs> suit. It really did a whole lot to my psyche, you know? Mm -hmm just mm -hmm. having that new environment people don't realize really? how important mm -hmm. it is to keep your environment yeah. clean to keep it you know up to date or whatever it is you feel like mm -hmm. you need to do to it if something yeah. is making you unhappy in your house you have to change yeah. it because you will get depressed about it you know um daryl and i were saying that all throughout the pandemic when everybody's on lockdown said i'm so grateful that our home is someplace we want to be so mm -hmm. i know we're going to put that on our prayer list but we we so we have that we have the the new book that is three forks of the way finish anything else you want to share with us or something I did I, I did just can... start I, I did just start another business okay so I, I think I'm a am I a serial <laughs> entrepreneur <laughs> that's such a thing because I mean I have the nonprofit. Me and Daryl <laughs> yeah I have the nonprofit change it uh changing hearts so mm -hmm. we changed the name from Chatbox foundation okay. to changing hearts okay so I still have the nonprofit. And uh, now I actually started a new venture called New Biz Consulting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where I, you know, help people um, get their businesses off the ground. Mm -hmm. You know, I just help them with um, consult, you know, just give them advice. I mean, I've been in this for 22, yes. 23 years. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you know I give exactly them advice. exactly what not to do. So that, right. that's oh my God. I know exactly what not to do. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. So we are definitely going to pray for that, that that is successful, that the book gets completed. Is there anything else that we can pray for you for? I, I love both of those. Um, that's probably about it. Just, uh, you know, the normal mm -hmm. and, and make sure that you pray for Tamika for whatever it is we told her we was going to pray, pray for. <laughs> whatever it is you might yeah. be needing tonight you know yeah, yeah, <laughs> Amen. well I'm gonna pray right now let's there pray you go. God we are so grateful for this time we are grateful for Tamika and for everything that you have poured into her she surely has a purpose Lord that is to share your love your kindness with everyone she meets I'm grateful to have been a benefactor of her love and for your love through her we want to ask right now that you would touch her business, touch her book, God, touch her, her new job, Lord, that she can continue to be a blessing to your people who are in need. And we yes. will surely give you all the glory and all the praise in Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you so much. I'm going to, do you have anything you want to give people your contact for your business or for um, changing hearts? Yeah, so for changing hearts, um, for I didn't even say what that was about. Actually, let me let me please say what that's about. Um, changing hearts is a foundation that helps the um, heart transplant community in Georgia. <clears throat> Excuse me. We support the community in ways of um, mentoring and financial, mm -hmm. you know, ways for the families. Um, during COVID, we did the help the heartbeat um, program. So we did baskets with like. 
um, Lysol spray. <clears throat> Things are yes. hard to find. Really? Mm -hmm. Excuse me. <clears throat> it's hard to, it was hard to find Lysol. We all know that. Yeah. So we found a strategic way to find some <laughs> and our supporters got together and we gave them baskets full of these items to help them to keep off those infections yeah. and keep mm -hmm. COVID away. So these are just things that we do with that um, foundation. And it's the website is www.changinghearts.org. Okay. So that's changing, C-H-A-N-G-I-N. Okay. Changing. Uh, I love um, it. Yeah. So my daughter was the inspiration for that company. Of course, you know, I lost her a couple of weeks before she turned 19. Yeah. You guys knew her well. Um, and uh, she actually started the foundation. That's the idea of the foundation. She mm -hmm, said mm -hmm. when she was in college, she wanted her money in her hand. Yes. Her, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, um, the scholarship money. Mm -hmm. She got, <laughs> she got a left-handed scholarship. And she wanted that money in her hand. She was like, well, mom, you know, why don't they give me that money? And I said, well, baby, they put it towards your school, school. Yeah. so that you don't have to pay that. And she goes, well, you would have paid that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What if I needed, she's like, what if I needed money for books and people mm -hmm. who's been through heart transplant yeah. like me, they should just get all kind of, and I was like, you're right, girl, you are right. But I said, you're going to have to start your own foundation because yeah. these people have theirs and that's how they do it, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. And so she asked me about a 501c3 mm -hmm. and I said, wow, I said, she's serious. Like yeah. she really wants to do this. So I got approval from the job and we started it. And then we got some bad news about her heart. Yeah. We started just focusing on her. Mm -hmm. and um, a few months after she passed my best friend called and says hey you know we ought to start a foundation mm. and I was like let me show you this email there so the email like was actually <laughs> yeah, the email was like a year prior to and she was like oh we got to do it wow so that was the inspiration to us actually starting the foundation and today you know the family's involved and mm -hmm. we just you know we get at it and that's really um, such a perspective that was being missed. And, and it's just like, you know, out of the mouth of babes that because they do, they need money right to them. They do. And, and when you think about it, when you're in the hospital, you see more of the need mm -hmm. than what you would see if you were just outside of the yeah. hospital. Yeah. So ultimately, and I know we got to go and wrap this up. I'm sorry, but the need for the heart transplant community mm -hmm. to get these types of rewards yeah. is a lot bigger than what we know. When we're in the hospital, we see all these cancer patients. Yeah. We see cancer, cancer, cancer. Mm -hmm. Chastity would say, well, mom, where'd they get that? And I was like, well, they got that from the cancer floor. Yeah. And she's like, well, where's the stuff for, you know, heart? Yeah. So now we have a feed the heart program at um, Eggleston for the oh, children. I love that. We, that. we actually partner with the feed the heart program mm -hmm. and um, we help feed the heart. Yeah. So there's, there's, more opportunity for transplant um, children now. So this awesome. this whole venture has been an inspiration to me and to a lot of others. Yeah. Can you did you know that the Lord was going to use you like He's doing, Miss Motivational <laughs> Speaker? <laughs> I love not, I'm it. telling it's you, good. and if if years ago if you had told me that this, I would have been like. Mm -mm. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for sharing with me and thank allowing you, us to pray for you. Um, I will definitely um, get all of your information into the description so everyone can just click on um, your links and follow you and all of that good stuff. Thank you so all much. Right. I appreciate it. Uh-huh. Thank you. All right. Have a Bye. good day. You too.